What is this thing in front of me? They were spoken to a human before. Right? And this is how they're becoming. And many young people have become, become like this because they have been so caught up in their technology that they are losing important social skills. And it's not just the social skills, even the drive, the drive to be the best you can be at everything you do. This has been replaced with the dopamine hits they get from winning at video games. So in the past, a young man would feel a sense of satisfaction and excitement and growth when he accomplishes something in life. Today he gets that same satisfaction from winning a video game. So then he doesn't have the aspiration to pursue things in the real world. It's easier to get that boost through a video game than through the real world. And so now we see even the aspirations of young people have changed. In the past, when you meet a young man and you ask him what do you want to be when you grow up, you know, you do all kinds of things. I'm going to be a doctor, I'm going to be a scientist, I'm going to be a scholar, I'm going to change the world. Now, the most standard answer you get, I'm going to be a YouTuber. I'm going to be a TikTok influencer. I'm going to be a gaming streamer. How low have our standards dropped? How low have our aspirations dropped? that we don't even have that aspiration to make something of our lives anymore. And this is the issue that I'm warning about today, that we as a community, we adapt and we adapt and we adapt, but we don't ever ask ourselves, is this the right way to adapt this technology? Is this technology even worth adapting at this point in time? Or even deeper question, is it worth inventing? You see, as Muslims, ethics and morals should guide every aspect of life. Even the inventions of technology should be guided by ethics and morals. You know, if we look at the world in the past hundred years, many of the weapons of mass destruction that were invented, I would dare say that if the people who invented those weapons actually had the proper ethics and morals, we wouldn't have seen those weapons invented. Because that is a misuse of technology to create something that brings more harm than good, that creates more destruction and benefit. But it's not just weapons. You know, as we now enter the age of AI, we have to ask ourselves, not if we can invent a realistic AI that can think for itself and do things for itself, not whether really we can, but whether we should. Is it even something worth pursuing as human beings? We're now entering an age where people want AI to run everything where they want the computers to handle their entire lives, where they want the ability to download things directly to their brain. Is this even a good thing to invent? The ability to download things directly to your brain. People are working on this technology at the moment. So, I want us to look today at two things. Number one, a list of harms that have come about in our lives from becoming over-reliant and addicted to technology. And then number two, some steps to find balance. Not saying do away with technology, I'm saying find balance, right? So number one, some of the harms that have taken over our lives through technology, some of them we may have recognized, some of them we may not even realize. And then number two, how do we restore balance between being techno technologically advanced but not losing our humanity in the process? Because we are in danger of becoming transhuman, that we are no longer even human beings, we are now half machines with our own consciousness connected to, the, to these machines. We are in danger of entering that stage of humanity. So what are the problems that are coming about from over-reliance on technology? Number one, of course, is addiction. A lot of people are addicted to technology. They cannot go an hour without it. I won't say a day, they can't go an hour without it, right? We've become such that if we don't have our devices on us, we enter a state of anxiety, a state of panic. And we see this especially with the younger generation who are basically raised on technology. That they cannot even think of what do I do for fun, what do I do with my life when there's no technology around. Now in the process of being addicted, there are a couple of other problems that come about. Number one, the loss of social skills. We lose our ability to socialize if we spend all our time in front of a device. And we are seeing this more and more with young people developing social anxieties. Think about it, there are more people today with social anxiety amongst the younger generation than they were 20 or 30 years ago. Why? One of the reasons is that they are not accustomed to talking to other people. They're always accustomed to being in front of a device. And so when you put them in a situation where they have to talk to someone, 
they, they are anxious because they don't have that experience of being in the real world. All they know is the virtual world. So we have this loss of social skills. Uh, it's not just social skills we are losing, they are real world skills that we are losing as well uh, when we become over reliant on technology. So amongst young men today, I see it's complaining, especially a lot of ladies complain about this with their husbands, the younger generation. A lot of young men don't know how to fix things around the home. They've completely lost their skills of using their hands, using a toolbox, using a drill, knowing how to fix things. We just rely on everyone else for these things. Right? You know, there's a click of a button, you can have someone at your house do it for you. And in the process, you are losing a valuable skill that makes you a man. You are losing very important skills that every person should have. And now we have the younger generation saying, oh, when I grow up, I'm not going to drive. Self-driving cars will be invented by then. So I don't need to learn how to drive. So what's happening is with every technology we're developing, we're actually letting go of some human skills in the process. As it is we, our generation of human beings, we may be like the first generations in history where we never needed to hunt animals. We actually kill the animals ourselves. And in the process, we lost some important skills. Right? The next generation loses more, and the next generation loses more. How do we find that balance where we get new technologies, technologies but we don't lose the skills in the process? We don't lose our ability to do things ourselves physically in the process. Another major problem that's coming about from the over-reliance on technology today is that people have lost that sense of family and community and neighborliness. You know, in the past, if you needed something, you would go and ask your neighbor. Now you all need on the app. So you don't even need to act with your neighbors anymore. That sense of neighbors being there for each other doesn't exist anymore. Many people today have never met their neighbors. Literally, you'll have a block of flats with 40 families, and a person can live there for 10 years and never meet their neighbors. And when they hear the hadith about the rights of neighbors, they can't understand, they can't relate to this hadith because they never even met their neighbors. They don't have a reason to meet their neighbors. They are just people in another block with their own lives. That neighborliness is going away. That sense of community. You know, people these days don't want to volunteer. They don't want to attend Islamic events. Everyone's just sitting at home in front of their technology. And then we have the loss of family. Right? And now family ties are being destroyed by people's misuse of technology. Whether it's looking at things they're not supposed to be looking at online. I don't need to go into more details about that. Whether it's talking to people they shouldn't be talking to online. Or whether it's simply just neglecting your family because you're addicted to your device. How many co complaints do we get these days from children that they feel neglected because whenever they're at home, mom and dad are on TikTok or Instagram, right? They don't actually have conversations with their kids. And then the kids learn that same habits and they don't have conversations with each other. So we have to become more intentional about how we use these technologies because we lose the sense of family, we lose the sense of community, we lose the sense of neighborliness when all we are doing is sitting on a device 24-7. Another thing that, come, that is coming about today because of the misuse of technology is the, la the rise of loneliness and depression. There are more people in the world today who are lonely than they were 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 50 years ago. Even though there are more people in the world today than they were back then. Because now everyone's living in their own little bubble. Everyone's living in their own little box. And I dare say, if we didn't need to gather for Salah, if we didn't have to gather five times a day for Salah and gather for Juma, some of us would never leave our homes. We would just be sitting in front of the computer all day. From the wisdom of Allah is we forced out of our homes and forced to have some kind of community, some kind of community gathering. Other nations don't have this. There are some people who literally don't leave their home to meet with anyone. And they don't have a connection with their parents, they don't have a connection with their siblings, and now with the younger generation, some of them don't even want to get married or have children, because life has become all about themselves. And then they complain about loneliness. Well, if you're moving away from the natural way of having companionship, which is through marriage and family, then of course loneliness is going to happen. So the funny thing about technology, it's brought the world together. We can now talk to anyone in the world, anywhere in the world, at, at any point in time. Yet for some reason, people feel more lonely today than they did in the past when they were disconnected from people, even one city away. Another problem that's happening today, because of our over-reliance on technology, is that we have become disconnected from nature. 
And we see in this more and more that young people today, many of them do not have any connection to the natural world. And there is a link between nature and belief in God. There is a strong link between spending time in nature and increasing your Iman. If you, if you study the Quran carefully, you'll find there are many, many passages where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to reflect on, the, on nature, to reflect on the creation of the heavens and earth, to reflect on the skies, on the trees, on the ocean, on the animals. But if you're never around these things, if you're always surrounded with just man-made inventions, then you are cut off from nature. And there has definitely been, in our times, a rise of atheism linked with a rise of being away from nature. These two things are linked. And there's actually a prescription I made when people tell me they're having doubts about God or they're having doubts about Allah, I tell them to spend time in nature. To actually spend time in nature. Because when you are disconnected from the natural world, then you are disconnected from the Creator. And when you spend time in the natural world, then you are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you are surrounding yourself with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are some of the problems and there are many others. There are many others that I may not even have thought about. One other one that comes to my mind is that we don't have time to think anymore. We don't have time to be creative anymore. We don't have time to develop new ideas. Where do new ideas come from? Where does creativity come from? It comes from boredom. Right? If you are bored, you start thinking. If you start thinking, you start coming up with new things. But today, we have become averse to boredom. Become averse to having the space just to sit and think. Instead, we want to be always entertained. And if you're always entertained, your mind is not growing, you're not learning, you're not thinking new things. You're just distracted from the real world. And so, if you look at young, the younger generation who they need to be always entertained with video games and with streaming media and things like this. They don't ever invent, you know in the past when kids were bored, they would invent their own games, right? They'll find a box or they'll find a ball or they'll find something and they'll invent something. The creativity will come up. Today you don't get that opportunity anymore. Well, thanks to Lotion if you do, but in general you don't, right? You don't get the opportunity anymore to, to sit and think and to be creative. And even as adults, we are, because of our technologies, some of us are on call for work 24-7, right? 24-7, you are reachable by the people you work with, so you never get time for family, you never get time to rest, and you never get time to think. And this is also becoming a problem in the modern world. Without time to think, we cannot come up with new and powerful ideas that can make this world a better place. So these are just some of the problems that are arising from our misuse of technology in the second khutbah will give us a few solutions on how we can find balance wa akhir dawana alhamdulillah rabbil alamin alhamdulillah wa ta wa salatu wa salam ala man la nabiy ba'da amma ba'd fa inna asal hadith kitabullah wa khayru hadith hadith muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru umur muhdatsatuha wa kullu muhdatsatin bid'ah wa kullu bid'atin dalalah wa kullu dalalatin fi nar so four things Four things all of us can do to find balance when it comes to adapting technologies and not losing our humanity in the process, right? Step number one, be intentional about what technology you adapt and how you adapt it. You don't have to adapt every technology that's invented, right? Some people feel like anytime something's invented, you have to try it out and you have to try and find a way to fit it into your life. And so they have every possible social media service on their phone. If you have every possible social media service on your phone, you literally can be sitting on your phone 24 7 without running out of things to scroll through. <coughs> it becomes a distraction. It's the same with streaming services. Right? People feel they need to adapt to every new streaming service, every new technological device. I mean, does your microwave and your toaster really need Wi Fi? <coughs> you really need a browser on your, on your fridge. Right? There's some weird technologies being invented. People feel like, oh, it's new, it's, let's adapt it. Ask yourself before you purchase any new technology, will this improve my life or will this be a distraction? This should be your, your, a criteria every person should have. For any technology, ask yourself, is this something that's going to enhance my life or is it going to be 
a distraction. You do not have to adapt every technology that people invent, especially in an age where every single year new technologies are being invented. You need to be selective. You need to look at what, at what is going to benefit you and adapt that. And if something is going to, for example, distract you from your work, distract you from your family, distract you from your ibadat, then maybe it's better not to adapt it. Right? If the harms outweigh the benefits, then avoid adapting it. Number two, have rules for yourself and your family in how you use technology. Have rules, not just for your family, for yourself as well. So we see many adults today are addicted to social media. Right? They cannot stop scrolling through social media. You need to make some rules for yourself if this is the case. Right? You need to give yourself a certain hours of the day when you're on social media. You need to limit the number of social media networks that you are subscribed to. You need to put your phone away when you're working, when you're spending time with family. You need to make rules for yourself. And it's the same for your kids. You cannot allow young people to just be on the technology and on their devices 24-7. You know, they need time to pray, they need time to think, they need time to study, they need time to be part of nature, they need time to socialize, they need time to interact with each other, they need time to interact with you. Technology should not get in the way of that. So you should have rules. You should have rules in place. And it's for the parents of the, of the homes to make these rules. So number one, be intentional in the types of technology you adapt and when you adapt it. Number two, have rules for your family and for yourself in how you use technology. Number three, make sure you understand properly the Islamic ethics that govern our usage of everything. Right? Technology is not haram. It's like how you use it and when you use it that matters. So it's just like using a tool. You can use a tool for good, you can use a tool for evil. It's the same with technology. If you understand Islamic values, you will be more conscious in your choice of what you do with your technology. And so you will have more value and ethical based rules on how you use that technology. So make sure you understand the Islamic ethics properly so you can apply it to your usage of technology. And number four, I remind all of us to spend more time in nature. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al Imran, Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ardi wa khnila fi layli wal nahari la ayatin yulil alba. That in the creation of the heavens and earth and the alteration of the day into night, there are signs for those who think. Alladina yalkurun Allah kiyamu wa kudu wa ajinu bihim. Those who remember Allah when they are sitting, standing, or lying down. I want us to think about this verse. Allah is saying that if you want to be close to Allah, if you want to remember Allah, if you want a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you need to reflect on nature. You need to be close to nature. You need to think. I mentioned earlier that because we always know devices, we don't have time to think. Instead of remembering Allah while sitting or standing or lying down, you know, we scroll into social, social media in all three of these positions. So when do we ever get time to sit and, and reflect? Allah says those who reflect on the greatness of Allah. Are we getting time to sit and reflect? Find ways to go back to nature. Find ways to interact with nature. Whether it's taking a walk in the park, whether it's taking a hike, whether it's spending a week up in the mountains, whether it's just having a good garden in your home that you spend some time in. But each of us should have some kind of connection to nature. Right? Even for children, a good way to connect them to nature is to get them a pet. Right? That they at least have an animal, a real creature that they have to care for and spend time with that is not digital. Right? It's not one of those digital creatures that if they die, you press the reset button. No, they actually have to take care of it. That connects them to nature. That allows them to learn important skills. So we need to go back to this that we are not always in our technological bubble. But we are also spending time out there in the real world, spending time in nature. And even if it simply means once or twice a week you take a walk in the park and you look at the trees and you look at the sky and you look at the birds and you say subhanallah and you say alhamdulillah and you remember Allah and you breathe that fresh air. That is a lot. That goes a long way to preserving your iman and finding some balance. Let us not become the kind of people who are disconnected from the world that Allah created because of the world that we made. And let us learn to find some balance. So to conclude, technology is a tool like any other. You can use it for good, you can use it for evil. I'm worried that in our generation, 
we have become addicted to technology and it is consuming our lives, it's affecting our relationship with Allah, it's affecting our relationships with each other, it's affecting our ability to think deeply and be creative. And so to find balance, let us have rules in how we use technology, let us be intentional about the types of technology we adapt, let us use our edits and models as our guidelines, let us make time to be in nature, and let us be very conscious in how we adapt to, modern, to, to the modern world. So we are not overwhelmed by these things, but rather we use them for good and we are able to avoid the dangers that come with them.